everyone. Welcome to Live Interactive English. This is Karen. Welcome back, friends. I am Shane. Today we're looking at part two of the Burglar's Christmas, and the vocabulary words are jewelry. Jewelry. Holly doesn't own much jewelry. Shame. Shame. Stan felt shame after lying to his parents about why he was late. Hush. 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 The movie is about to start. Okay. Rob. Rob. The three men robbed several banks before being caught by the police. Briefly. Briefly. The new student briefly described herself. Okay, so we've got a couple of young men,、mm -hmm. and now we're down to following one of the young men, right? That's the younger right,、brother. the younger one. Okay, so where is he going to wander off to now? Well, you know, just do a little quick review of the story、mm. from day one. You know, he doesn't have anything right now, right. and it's Christmas time. Right. So he decides that he wants to become a bur burglar, right?、Yes. And he hasn't really, you know, kept in touch with his own family, and I don't think he has many friends.、Mm, that's a key point.、Mm. So. He sees an open door. Okay, so he's about to go in. And he's going to go rob the house, go <gasps> burgle the house. All right? right. Okay. And he goes in there, and he sees a cup, and he's going to steal it.、Mm -hmm. And he realizes,、oh, this is my childhood cup. It's his childhood cup. What does that mean? So he's actually in the home. Of his parents, <gasps> but he didn't even recognize it because they have moved to a new home. So he was about to rob his own home. So he sees his mother, and he says to his mother, "Oh my gosh, I was here to rob you." <gasps> What will his mother do? Is she gonna kick him out? Kick him out? Call the police? Maybe? Or、I、get really, a get a gun? I really don't know, but、uh, that's her son. Well, let's find out what she does. Okay, enjoy. Enjoy. The burglar's Christmas. Full of despair, the man notices that the front door of a nearby house is open. He slips inside and makes his way to the jewelry case, where he finds a familiar-looking cup. It dawns on him that it is the very cup he used as a boy. A woman soon enters the room. Willie, Willie, is it you? She asks. Welcome to Live Interactive English Magazine. Today's lesson is called "The Burglar's Christmas," Part Two. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff, and I'm Mike. We're reading a Christmas story with a twist. This doesn't have Santa or flying reindeer or anything like that. We had two desperate, hungry, cold young men in Chicago around Christmas time. One of them was so hungry and desperate he decided to become a burglar. He decided to steal things, but. When a woman walked by and dropped a package in front of him, he didn't steal it. He gave it back to her because inside he is honest. But at this point, he had a strange feeling—not a feeling of happiness that he's still a good, honest guy, but a feeling of failure. Yes, he feels as though he can't do anything right. Goodness gracious! Here I have an opportunity to rob someone, and I can't even do that right. This person is miserable or full of despair. Anyways, yes, full of despair. The man notices that the front door of a nearby house is open, so he's being given another opportunity to rob, to be a thief. Let's see if he makes good on this opportunity. And yes, he starts to. He slips inside and makes his way to the jewelry case, where he finds a familiar-looking cup. Hmm, very interesting. So he has decided to try to be a burglar again. He's gone into the house quietly, sneaking around, trying to find some jewelry. If you're a burglar, jewelry might be an attractive thing to steal because jewelry are basically ornaments that people wear on their bodies, not clothing, accessories, things like that—rings, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, 
things made of silver and gold, things with diamonds or other precious stones on them. If you put these things on something that you wear on your body, then you have created a piece of jewelry. And as many of you know, jewelry, especially jewelry with gold and jewels, diamonds on it, can be expensive. Good news for burglars. All right, let's look at our example sentence. Holly doesn't own much jewelry. We should also point out that not all jewelry is expensive. Sometimes when it's not, we call it costume jewelry, right? It's just made mm. of plastic or wood or something like that. But the jewelry he's looking for is expensive. But what about this cup? This cup. It must be maybe made of silver or gold, but oh. it also said it was familiar looking. He has seen this cup before? Yes, yeah, someone thinks that this cup is precious. One way or another, he's looking at this cup and something hits him. He realizes something. It dawns on him that it, the cup, is the very cup he used as a boy. Then a woman soon enters the room. She says, thief, thief, thief. No, that's not what she says at all. She says, Willie, Willie, is it you? She asks. She recognizes the man. She recognizes the man. Wow. Hmm. So is it Willie? We'll find out after a break. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。我们在第一天的故事读到，在圣诞节这一天，两位年轻人无家可归，也没有东西可以吃。那其中比较年轻的那一位很痛苦又很绝望，决定要当盗贼。但没想到，当有人不小心把东西掉在他面前的时候，他想都没想就把东西还给人家。这下子他更绝望了。天哪，自己怎么连贼都当不了呢？刚刚 Jeff 老师用到 gracious 这个字 ，G R A C I O U S。Gracious， 它可以用来表达惊讶、感叹。当我们说 Goodness gracious， 就表示天哪，哎呀！好，那故事接着提到，这名男子他充满绝望。那这时候他就注意到附近有一间房子的前门开着，他偷偷溜进房子里，找到珠宝盒，但是却发现一个杯子，哎，看起来好眼熟哦。他突然想起。那是他小时候用的杯子哎，那接着就有一名女子走进房里，就说 ：“Willie, Willie， 是你吗？”好，我们先来看单字 ，jewelry， jewelry， 它是指珠宝或是首饰。那它是珠宝首饰的总称，是当不可数名词用。那刚刚 Mike 老师有用到两个名词，可以学起来 ，ornament， ornament， 它是拼作 o r n a m e n t。这个字表示装饰品。老师还提到 accessory， accessory 它是拼作 a c c e s s o r y， 这个字可以表达饰品配件。好，那么老师还有提到 costume jewelry， costume jewelry， 这是指服饰珠宝，好像有人把它称作时尚珠宝。那这种珠宝呢，不是用真的钻石、黄金等贵重材质去做的，而是用价值比较低廉的材质做的，可以用来点缀啊，或是搭配服饰。好，那么补充单字 despair， despair 是名词，表示绝望。那我们赶快回到课文中，看看那一名女子到底是谁吧。The burglar's Christmas. He recognizes his mother's face and realizes that he is in his parents' new house. Feeling shame, he tells her that he is there to steal her things. Hush, my boy. Those are ugly words. How could you rob your own house? She says. She embraces him, and he can feel her warmth. Oh, mother, life is hard, hard. He says. Surprise, surprise, everyone! It is Willie, and yes, this is his mother. So she would know. Here's the question, though: How would Willie not know? That he is in his parents' home. True, you would think he would recognize the home and even recognize the neighborhood that the home is in, but he didn't do either of those things. It says he recognizes his mother's face and realizes that he is in his parents' new house. So they must have moved there in the time since he hasn't been talking to them, since the, he hasn't been in contact. So. He didn't recognize the house. It also says, feeling shame, he tells her that he is there to steal 
her things. Wow, he's very honest. He's there. He tells her, "I'm here to rob you," but of course, he's not saying it in a proud kind of way. He's saying it, and he is full of shame. He knows that what he's doing is wrong. So he's not all bad. He's not all bad. He feels shame for having to steal in order to feed himself and to survive, and he probably feels even worse knowing that he was about to steal from his own mother. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the noun shame right now. Shame is a bad feeling that you feel after doing something wrong or foolish or silly. The noun is shame. Ashamed is the adjective. For example, Stan felt shame after lying to his parents about why he was late. Yes, he felt bad for having done something wrong, i.e., lying. That's right. Well. The mother, she listens to what he says. She understands that he was doing something wrong, and he feels shame. But remember, this is her son. She loves this boy, so she says, "Hush, my boy. Those are ugly words. How could you rob your own house?" She says. So she recognizes what she, he did, but she doesn't really care. That's why she tells him to hush, be quiet. Stop talking! I don't want to hear it. You are my son. This is your home. Hush. This verb is just another way of saying shh or quiet. Stop talking. We can say it to people when we really are a little upset. Hush. I'm trying to do something. But we can also say it when they're saying words that we feel are not necessary. If they're apologizing for something that we aren't angry about, we might say hush. Save your words. I still love you. That sort of thing. But as I said, you could also just be telling someone to be quiet. For example, hush. The movie is about to start. I'm trying to watch it. Please be quiet.、Yeah. A mother might also hush her baby.、Mm. Hush, hush. Calm down. Quiet down. Everything is okay now. Now, before we move on, let's talk about the verb rob. When you rob someone, you take their stuff. You steal from them. Now, one note though: when you rob, not only do you steal from someone and take their possessions or their property, but you might even threaten them or use force while you're doing these terrible things. For example, the three men robbed several banks before being caught by the police. Goody, goody, goody! They caught those guys. Now back to our story. Mother, she's there, and she gives him a big hug. She embraces him, and he can feel her warmth. Oh, mother, life is hard, hard. He says. Wow, he's、yeah. really desperate. But don't worry. Now he's back in the loving embrace of his mother, his family, his home. I think things are going to be getting better. But the only way to find out is to come back after this break. Oh, 原来这个年轻人闯进的房子是他爸妈的新家。那名女子就是他妈妈。那现在他觉得好羞愧哦。他也老实的跟妈妈说，他来这里是为了偷东西。那这时候妈妈就跟他说 ：“Shh, hush。”不要再说了，那些字眼太难听了。既然这是爸妈的家，也就是他自己的家，怎么能说是抢自己家里的东西呢？当妈妈拥抱他的时候，他就感受到妈妈的温暖，所有的情绪涌上心头。他就跟妈妈说：“人生好难哦。”好，我们的文中有一个字是 embrace，embrace， embrace, 它当动词表示拥抱。那这边还有三个单字 ，shame，shame。Shame, shame. 它是当名词表示羞愧或是丢脸，那它的形容词是 ashamed。ashamed 它是拼作 a s h a m e d， 这个字是形容羞愧的，可能因为犯错而感到惭愧啊，有罪恶感或是羞耻的。那还有一个形容词是 shameful， shameful 就是在 shame 后面加 f u l， 这个字可以用来形容丢脸的、可耻的。好，下一个单词叫 hush， hush。它当动词表示叫人家安静下来，或者停止说话。那常常用来叫别人安静，就类似我们说的 “shh”。再来看 “rob”，“rob” rob, 
这个动词它表示抢劫或是抢夺。那 Jeff 老师在解释单字时用到两个名词，一个是 possession， possession 它是拼作 p o s s e s s i o n， 这个字当不可数名词表示拥有或是占有，它当可数名词可以用来表达所有物。那么还有 property。Property， 它是拼作 P R O P E R T Y， 这个字可以表达财产啊、资产或是房地产。接下来课文中 ，The Burglar's Christmas. He briefly talks with his father, and his mother gets him some dinner. While he eats, she explains that his father's business had brought them to Chicago. Then she lets him know that no matter what he has done, she will always love him. William is content now. He is full, warm, and at home again. Ah,、uh, dear old mom, she's always there for you. When it's cold outside, you can always count on your mother to give you some love and some warmth. Anyways, that's enough for mom right now. Next. Dad gets in on the action. Yes, the young man briefly talks with his father, and while this goes on, his mother gets him some dinner. Ah, so he does go and talk to his father, who was also there in the house. And we're told that he briefly talks with his father. I'm sure there's a lot more to talk about, but when he first sees his father, they just speak. For a very short time, that's what the adverb briefly means. For a very short time, or quickly, or something that you do, but not a lot of time passes. It happens and then it ends in a very short period. For example, the new student briefly described herself. She didn't talk about herself for ten minutes. She gave us her name and a little bit of information, and probably you know stopped talking after thirty seconds or a minute. A very quick. Conversation. The mother, of course, was off making some food for the young man to eat. Remember, he was desperately hungry. And then we read, while he eats, she, the mother, she explains that his father's business had brought them to Chicago. So that explains why he found his parents in this house that he didn't know they lived in. His father was there for business. Then she lets him know. That no matter what he has done, she will always love him. The、Aww. true love of a parent,、mm. that wonderful, unconditional love、mm. that we celebrate at all times, but often comes out especially powerfully at Christmas time. Mommy will always love you, and for this reason, William, Willie, is content now. He's happy and satisfied now. He's also. Full, warm, and at home again. Oh. oh, how nice! All right, that's it for our story. But we still have the "What do you think?" question to ask and answer. Mike, if you were the young man,、mm. how would you feel upon seeing your parents for the first time in years? Well, if if I were the young man, I would feel happy seeing my parents for the first time in years because a lot of time had passed. Many things had happened, and I hadn't been able to share my life or my experiences with them. If I was also stealing from their home at the same time, the feelings would be more complicated. But I think I would feel happy. Me too. Yeah, me too. All right, folks, that's it for our story. We'll have more fun for you guys next time. See you then. 这名年轻人误打误撞来到爸妈的新家，他跟爸爸有简短的聊了一下，那妈妈帮他准备一些餐点，并且向他解释说，是因为爸爸的生意，他们才会来到芝加哥。那妈妈就跟他说，不管他做了什么，他永远都爱他。那现在这名年轻人 William 觉得心满意足，他吃饱穿暖，而且回家了。哦，我真替他开心哎。我们最后来看单字 briefly。Briefly， 它是副词，表示简短的或是短暂的。那补充单字 content，content， content, 它是当形容词，形容满足的或是满意的。那刚刚 Mike 老师聊到，爸妈给的爱是无条件的爱。那么 unconditional，unconditional， 
unconditional， 它是拼作 u n c o n d i t i o n a l， 这个字可以用来形容无条件的或是绝对的。好啦，以上就是这些讲解，同学们别走开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny。在今天的课程中，我们要介绍三个文法重点。第一个是 something dawns on somebody。第二个是 the very 强调名词的用法。第三个是 no matter 加上 wh 疑问词的用法。首先，我们来学习 something dawns on somebody。Dawn 做动词表示逐渐明白或是开始了解，可以用 something dawns on somebody 来表达某人开始明白了，开始了解某事情了。例如 ，Suddenly the horrible truth dawned on him. 忽然间，他突然了解到那个恐怖的真相了。另一个常用的句型是 It dawns on somebody 加上 that 子句。那句型中的 it 是虚主词，用来代替 that 子句。例如 ，It finally dawned on Kate that she would never become a famous singer. Kate 终于明白，她永远不会成为一名知名歌手。接着，我们来学习 the very 强调名词的用法。Very 做形容词可以指正式的或者是同样的，常常用 the very 来强调之后的名词，表示正是怎么样，就是怎么样。例如 ，That's the very book I've been looking for。那正是我一直在寻找的书哎。最后，我们来学习 no matter 加上 wh 疑问词的用法。No matter 之后接 wh 疑问词，像是 what、who。When, where, why, how, whose 等等所引导的子句，表示不管怎么样，或是无论怎么样。像 no matter what 表示无论什么 ，no matter where 表示无论在哪 ，no matter when 表示无论何时 ，no matter who 表示无论是谁等等。我们来看两个例句 ：No matter what challenges you encounter, you must have faith in yourself. 无论你遇到什么困难挑战，都要对自己有信心。No matter whose turn it is, someone has to take out the garbage now. 不管是轮到谁，现在要有人去倒垃圾。以上是今天的重点整理，我们下次见喽。See you next time. Bye. Party 中聊天，称赞别人的五句实用句。欢迎收看《就爱讲英文》，我是悠悠。Okay. 大家在参加这个 party 聚会的时候呢，嗯、通常会称赞对方的装扮打扮来打开话匣子。但如何称赞对方呢？这个很重要哦。嗯、今天跟大家分享五个要怎么样称赞别人的实用句型。一 ，This dress looks great on you。二 ，That's a pretty purse。Where did you get it？ 三 ，You have a good sense of fashion. 四 ，You're a smart dresser. 五 ，I like your high heels. 首先呢，女生参加 party 一定会精心打扮，对，对好好这个时候我们就要，<笑>这个时候我们就要说 ，This dress looks great on you.、Um, This dress looks great on you. 穿这个洋装真好看，哎、欸，一定心花怒放，觉得你真有品味，有 sense 哦、嗯、你嘿嘿。我说啊，你穿西装真好看，对，对不对 ？Thank you 啦，嗯、好，那这然后再来，你还可以去称赞对方的这个手饰啊、配件啊、嗯，对，就比如说他拿一个手拿包好了，哦、oh, ，That's a pretty purse。好，那后面也可以再加一个 ，Where did you get it？ 嗯，这表示呢，你有在观察他，注意到他，然后你也显示出，哎，称赞他的品味非常的好。那、嗯、你在哪里买的、啊？我也想要一个这样，所以他就会觉得说，哇、哦，你也喜欢哦，遇到知音的感觉。Where did you get it？ 对， get it? 你的第一印象就。得分好不好、嗯？所以我们要直接礼貌自然地称赞对方的品味风格，但是前面两句都比较委婉，暗示性，我们可以直接单刀直入一点。You have a good sense of fashion. 
太棒了。对，你的真，你真有时尚品味呢。是不是 ？You have a good sense of fashion. 对 ，You have a good sense of fashion. 对对对。Okay. 对。我们还可以其他，好，你就继续好了，我来讲。好，继续。对，那我们还可以用其他的说法哈，比如说用 you 当主词，对不对？因为我们刚刚讲是 you have a great sense of fashion， 你也可以说 you are a smart dresser。You are a smart dresser。对，就是你穿衣服非常有 sense 啊，这个穿衣服非常会非常有品味，对，很会穿衣服。对，但女生也常常会说呢啊，我喜欢你的高跟鞋，哇，你高跟鞋好好看哦。好，对，这个时候呢，我们可以直接说 I like your 看什么东西，不管是它的发型啦、啊、鞋子啊、配件啦、啊，都可以。I like your 哒哒哒。I like your high heels。I like your hair style。I, I like your husband. Ah, this is not good. Oh, no, no, this is not good. Okay, okay. That you can also praise the other woman. Women like to hear this. Praise her appearance is very good. This time, ah, your hair is very good. You have really nice skin. You have really nice skin. Wow, what's your secret? What's your secret? Your secret is what? This kind of hearing this is really happy. Really? Hey, you have really nice skin. Thank you. What's your secret? You have really nice skin. Thank you. What's your secret? I don't want to tell you. We'll look at today's live action. Hi. Hi. Oh, you look great in that suit. Oh, thanks. That's a pretty purse. Where did you get it? Um, it was a gift. I noticed that you have a good sense of fashion. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, I like your heels too. Oh. And you. you have really great skin. Ah, uh. what's your secret?